Welcome to a new episode of my High Performance Java Persistence video course. In this lesson, you are going to see how you can set up the High Performance Java Persistence project, which we will use throughout this video course. First of all, you need to go to my GitHub account and choose the High Performance Java Persistence repository. Perfect. Now you can either clone the project or simply download it. For simplicity's sake, we will just download it. Now let's unzip the project we have just downloaded from GitHub. Perfect. We can now delete the zipped file since we will no longer need it. Now we can open IntelliJ IDEA and import the project using Maven. We are going to choose create module groups and import Maven projects automatically, as well as choosing Java 1.8 since, as you will soon see, I'm making heavy use of lambdas in this project. And that's it! Now open the terminal and run Maven Clean Test Compile. It's not a good idea to run the install Maven phase because it will run all tests and some of those were designed to run for minutes. We can now go to the test folder and open a test class. Let's pick the find entity test. There are many tests in this project, some for JDBC, others for JPA and Hibernate. Luckily, tests are grouped by folders, so you can easily find whatever you might be interested in. Now, back to our find entity test, the entities method declares what entities are used by this test. We are also explicitly declaring the entity name to avoid Hibernate choosing the nested class fully qualified name as entity name. If we scroll back to the beginning of this test class, we can find the init method, which is called before every test execution. If you override the init method, you have to make sure you call the base class init method as well. There's also an after init callback method, which you can use to execute some logic after the base class init method was called. The doing JPA template method is declaring abstract test and executes the provided Java 1.8 lambda in the context of a new entity manager and entity transaction. If you execute the test find method, you will see it runs on PostgreSQL. That's because the test extends abstract PostgreSQL integration test. If you scroll to the beginning of the test log, you will see that the PostgreSQL 9.5 dialect was used by Hibernate. All executed statements rely on PostgreSQL syntax and features like creating and calling a PostgreSQL database sequence for the entity identifier. If you choose to extend abstract test instead of the PostgreSQL specific one, the test will run on the hypersonic in-memory database. When rerunning test find and verifying the log, we can see that the hypersonic SQL dialect was used this time. You can also override the database method and declare what database type you'd like this test to run against. If we choose MySQL, tests are going to run on the local MySQL database server. Notice that Hibernate used the MySQL 5.7 dialect this time. The generated SQL statements don't use database sequences since they are not supported by MySQL 5.7. 
Running a data access logic test using this GitHub repository is very easy and flexible as well.